the Money Talk Viewpoint. We are an online podcast and financial education platform for fluent investors. Yeah, yeah so I help um, small to mid-sized business owners get found online. Is a website better or is a landing page? So the landing page, you hit the landing page, you're putting in right. your data information, and you send them directly to where they're going to go. Which works better for the professional practitioner? Whether it's a law firm, accounting firm, financial advisors, attorneys, which, which really works better for the professional person? Well, if you think about it, um, if they haven't seen your landing page, if they didn't receive an email or an ad that had your landing page associated with it, which is just a mini website, a landing page is just a mini website. Um, they're not going to find your website unless, you know, there's an ad or or they search for it. They actually type in your name. You know, if, if it wasn't an ad that came to them, they'll type in your company's name if they know it or your name. And then you will pop up online. Right. And and when they're looking, they're going to see reviews on you uh, and so on. Um, they, they'll probably see your website, too. And they'll say, oh, here's their website. Let me check out their website. So they go to your website. You click on it. And the, the problem with websites, like you said, it's normally been like an online brochure, you know, and and people get lost. If you offer multiple different things, it's easy for people to get lost. So what you do with the website is you have the video is a very important thing to put on the first page of your of your um, of your website. Excuse me. One second. Um, so, yeah, you put that on your website and explain you can explain. Here's how you get around my website. If you're interested in this question, here's where you go to get that question or these questions. Here's where you go to get those answered. You just click on my blog or, you know, whatever it might be. Or you want my contact information, my, just go to my contact information on the tab above. So you, you direct them with a video. And that's that's very important. Google recommends you have a video on your front page because front it makes page. it easier. The front page of your website, you should have a video? Yes. The front page of your, your website should have an explainer video to explain what you do and where the, how they can navigate your website. That's impressive. You know, and again, when a person doesn't, you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yes. I, I, I'm reflecting back on the number of people I know who, uh, unless they're working for a large enough practice, where they're paying a whole group of people, which can, can be kind of costly. Oh, but yeah. For the person who is a practitioner who's studying out on their own, because nobody's an independent doctor anymore. The doctors mm -hmm. have to be part of an association or they're part of some group, unless they're in a small town. But in your lot around a large or major, major city, you don't have a choice. You have to be part of uh, whatever the group is called. But if you're yes. coming out of a firm as, a, as an attorney, you, you, yep. you may be a, a private practitioner or a financial advisor, if you're a private practitioner or an insurance agent, unless you're part of some independent uh, big group, you know, that has property casualty, they're independent. And if your family office like me, I'm independent. So yes. to me is a major, major issue because a lot of times they do not know where to start. Yes. Yes, that's true. What's a good starting point for a person coming out in the beginning? Is, is it, so, is it, I'm sorry, is it, I was going to say, is it the website? Is it the landing page? Is it the... It's everything. Because people people prefer different um, sites, for example. They, they like Facebook or they like YouTube or they like to go to someone's website or they want to do all three. So um, you want to be out there on all of the media, social media, the popular social media especially, and all the popular websites, you know, for your industry, for your, you know, all the associations. Um, so the more you're out there and there's there's ways that you can do this um, automatically in some cases, depending on how it's set up. So now I can get out there on all these different uh, medical sites. For example, if I'm a doctor, um, I can, of course, you know, make sure that I'm getting found for my website by doing certain things on my website. Um, you know, so video is a very, very key thing to that right now. I mean, Google loves video. They bought YouTube. <laughs> they own YouTube. And a lot of people say that YouTube is the number two most searched uh, search engine out there. So people use YouTube a lot to find out how to fix things that they have, a lot of their problems. So they'll type in their problem and they'll get a video coming back to explain it to them because they prefer video. People prefer video 
nowadays. So, um, so that all makes sense, I think, is to try to get yourself in a multiple different places because people will look around, right? They won't just look at one thing. No, here's another point I want to bring out. When I first started this whole podcasting, it wasn't called a podcast, but what happened was YouTube created the podcast channel uh, sometime about November. Yes. Before that, it was just a video. And so I did the videos in the beginning. <laughs> And so I learned to take the video and chop it up and make it into a podcast. One yes. video, chop it up three times, make it a podcast. That's but right. The question I have, because the problem that I had was being hacked. Is there a uh -huh. way for people to protect themselves from being hacked? See, when I first started, I started in 2000, it seems like a thousand years ago, but 2021. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't actually launch until 2022. And I swear, it feels like I, I spent so much time meeting people, researching what to have them say and learning how to get it right. And then I got it up and running. I would, I would put it on, I would do like I'm doing on Zoom now. Went from Zoom, I would launch it up through YouTube. And then we had a premiere launch for people. And then I had it on YouTube and um, Facebook and Twitter and all. And what happened? Everything got hacked. Mm -hmm. Now, this happens to people. How do you, what, what are some, some information or suggestions you would have for a person that's uh, setting out on their own practice? prevent themselves from getting half yes it, number one you want to have a um, a test done they have tests that will mimic a person that's trying to hack your site uh, so there's there's uh, things out there that there are uh, companies what they do is penetration tests they call them security penetration tests so you want to get one of those done because they'll help you identify where the holes are from a security standpoint and how a spammer could get into your, or a hacker could get into your um, particular sites. So they can help you identify what those holes are. And then they can also recommend how to fill, you know, fill those holes up so you don't get hacked. It's oh. called a pen test. They call it pen test for short. So if you do a search on pen test, there's a number of companies out there that do them. And I was, I worked for a company that actually did penetration tests uh, for security. PEN test. Pen yes, test. PEN, like for penetration. Yep, okay. stands for penetration. Mm -hmm. What is the difference in that and a cyber backer? Well, um, actually, I don't know cyber <laughs> backer. <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't heard that term. <laughs> I just, um, I, but, I, I just introduced that term within the last day. It's called a cyber. Oh yeah, backer. yeah. I just, I, I, you know, what happens is, I'll look it up. Talk to people online, you start learning. God knows everything. I never heard of cyber backer before, but it's called a cyber backer. And I guess I guess they're like the I don't know what it is. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. I, I'll look it up myself. Well, you know, I work for a company that does security, so I, I haven't heard that one. But there's a lot of different terms going out, and it changes every day. So, you know, cybersecurity is uh, is key to have somebody take a look at it for you and help you make sure that you don't have holes that they can easily get into and hack your sites. I tell you what, it reminds me of um, many years ago. My husband started. His own, he was a he was a commodities trader, and he left a trade floor, and he and some partners set up, they built their own, so this is early, early 80s, like 82, uh -huh. 84, they built their own software company. They could name their own oh, price. Yeah. Within a few years of that, the number of kids coming out of school with software backgrounds forced them to lower their price. Yeah. And I imagine that's going to happen with this uh, security protection and security whatever, <laughs> cyber backing. Yes, yes. All the cybersecurity is becoming such a critical issue that there are more students coming out of school who have a yes. cyber background. My daughter's dating a guy who has a cyber, he's in there in France. See, this guy has a, a cyber program and a, a straw company, but it's, it's, he's studying cybersecurity because it is that important of an issue. It is. It is very important. It changes every day, and there's no such thing as being 100% protected. So no matter what you do, there's, you know, you just want to make sure that you don't make it easy because if they go to your site and they find it's hard, they're going to go, well, I don't want to work on a hard one. I'm going to go somewhere else where it's easy to hack into. So they'll find vulnerabilities on other sites and go after those sites first. So it's kind of, you know, it's important to, to make it hard for them because they'll give up after a time because they don't, they're trying to make money and uh, that's how they do it. They, they find people that are the most vulnerable. Oh boy! So are the private practitioners, small businesses, are most vulnerable, aren't they? Yes, a lot of small businesses think that they're immune to security hacks. It's not true. Uh, it's, if you look at the statistics, 
how many small businesses that are getting hacked every day, you'll find that there's quite a few. So you have like a one in 10% chance actually right now of getting hacked as a small business owner. And a lot of people think that, oh, it's only large companies that are getting hacked, like Microsoft and HP just got recently just got hacked in the last few days, a major hack. So, um, so yeah, but it happens to small businesses all the time. I think I'm, I think I did my one, I did, I did, I did my one in 10 about a year ago <laughs> or my 10 because yeah. it kept going over and over again. But it did, what it did for me as an individual, it, I, I, the fear you experience is unbelievable, but I think I oh. trained myself to get past that habit of being so fearful. Yes. Always a solution, no matter what the problem is, there's a solution to it and you just have to keep looking around to find that solution. Mm -hmm. But it's not impossible, right? And a lot of them are human issues, like uh, they uh, through email. So somebody will try to they call it phishing. They'll they'll fish information out of you um, to figure out your your information so that they can hack your company. Uh, so they'll call somebody in the company and they'll ask them certain questions, pretending like they're the CEO of the company. Um, nowadays, you can actually create a AI voice to sound like anybody. <laughs> And, uh, you know, so it's really difficult and you have to be, you have to have, edu there's education out there that helps people though in companies to prevent them from giving out private information and then to make sure they verify that they're talking to the right person, you know, they think they are. So, um, so there's all sorts of uh, education too that needs to, it's not just all automation tools. It's also, you know, people education on how to prevent a hack. You know, let me ask you another question because it's very important. Now, the person's out there now and they're looking how to reach out to you. How do they find you? 